Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Antique Annihilation. <clears throat> no, um, Antique Analysis. Yes, that's what we're going to call this segment, Antique Analysis. This is the Commodore 64 data set. It was actually uh, used with the Commodore Pets and the Commodore 128 and some of the other Commodore machines. And if I remember correctly, someone even built an adapter so you could plug this thing into the Omega. I don't know if it was very popular or how frequently it was used, but it supposedly existed. Now this thing was released in 1978, and it used this thing as its storage media. This cassette tape, as an audio cassette tape, could hold a maximum of 150 kilobytes of data per side on a 90-minute tape. Now. Time to load was uh, a variable, if you, if, if you choose to, to use that phrase. Um, it, it loaded 60 to 70 bytes per second. That means it could take up to half an hour or more, maybe a little less, if you were to completely fill a Commodore 64 with program code i.e. a big video game. I mean, it's possible, and there were some applications that actually did it. But more common was, you'd have a whole bunch of programs on a tape, and you'd have a little spreadsheet that would tell you what time code or time stamp you'd have to go to, and you would fast forward to the appropriate time stamp, like 27 seconds, and then you'd hit stop, and then you'd type a load command in, 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 into the Commodore 64, and then you would hit play and then the machine would read back out all of the data from the tape into the Commodore 64 stuffing the RAM and then running the program good stuff uh, something else to note about these tapes is they were actually very durable I mean these things floated around in backpacks of uh, high school students and so they could listen to their ghetto blasters and boom boxes and you know make mix tapes and record over them a hundred times and you know, they'd still work as an audio tape. Something that's actually quite interesting about this media is at one point in time over in Europe, you could actually tune in to certain radio stations and record the radio station when they would give you a cue, and they would actually play back the audio portion of data that you could record and then play into your Commodore 64. And apparently, it was reasonably popular in a few areas to get your software that way. Pretty interesting, eh? Now, we're gonna go ahead and tear down this uh, bad boy. I bought it off of eBay and she's a uh, he, she, it, whatever. It's broken. It, I purchased it as a non-functional unit, so I have no problems tearing it apart. Oh, crap, where's my screwdriver? I gotta get a screwdriver. Hold on. So here is the tape drive internals already stripped apart. Over here is a shield that went right over the uh, circuit board and uh, was grounded with a screw and that said uh, keep the noise out, keep the uh, RF from leaking out into the world and so it won't uh, be picked up on a toaster because, you know, way back in the day nobody really cared about shielding that much and man who cares it'll work um, if we look over here here's that uh, counter I was talking about that's your uh, directory listing you just go to the right uh, you fast forward until you get to the right place it's spun by this little mechanism here oh my those rubber bands are pretty weak that's probably why it was sold as non-working rubber bands are pretty loose I bet you some new rubber bands and this guy would run like a top. Over here are the read and write heads. Um, there's a motor that's the primary drive for the whole thing. There we go. Just like that. Spins everything around. I don't know if you can really tell. Oh! Oh, that nah, just took it off the... Meh! Ah! Oh my god, I broke it! I broke it! Ah, there we go. Merry Christmas. Anyways. So yeah, here's the uh, mechanical bits of the uh, data set drive. Um, over here is the PCB, and 
seats upside down. That uh, 74 LS14 chip, that is an inverting Schmidt trigger. And those other two chips, well, they're the same chip. It is a 65, 62, it, it, they are dual op amps. Um, and all those do is they amplify the signals from the head over here and just boost it and boost it and boost it and amplify it more until it can be uh, transmitted over a couple wires to the rest of the Commodore 64. The Schmidt trigger um, just does some conditioning, give it some nice square edges so that uh, everything stays synced and timed up correctly. It's a pretty, pretty simple little unit. Um, very robust, very durable, and except for uh, weak rubber bands, you know, these things were pretty much the duck's guts back in the days. Let's, uh, yeah, yeah. Enjoy, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this quick video. Have a wonderful weekend, evening, day. I don't know.